Alright everybody, welcome to the show. I'm in the control room again. I'll probably not to push around buttons and stuff. I hope you're doing well. We're gonna set, we're set to start in just about five minutes. Everything's looking pretty good. Bobby's getting warmed up in the, uh, in the presentation area. As you come in, say hello. It helps. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Etc. 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 Um, it is good to see you. I do appreciate your coming in. And I do hope you're having a really good day. So, four minutes, 42 seconds, we'll be get underway.
Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, today, we're going to be going through all the new features that we just released in version 18 of Metastock. You know, this upgrade, it's been a really long time coming. Uh, it took a little bit longer than uh, we normally have for our upgrades. However, it was definitely well worth the wait. Uh, we've completely redone the charting engine and there's so much new functionality and tools throughout the platform uh, that you'll be able to start taking advantage of. Let me, uh, before I get too far, go through our legal disclaim, uh, disclaimer. We always just have to briefly go through this here. Uh, so this demonstration, it's de designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. And it's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators uh, and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Uh, so we shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, uh, and any trading strategies or information provided in connection with the company. So uh, that's all I actually have to read. The rest of it you can see up there on the screen. Uh, and so to kind of get into it and to jump into the features here, uh, and by the way, I guess I should say before I get started, if you guys have questions throughout the demonstration, uh, please feel free to ask. I'm not always perfect at looking on my other screen over here to see those. Uh, but I have Jeff as backup. He's uh, also going to be watching the YouTube chat as well as uh, GoToWebinar because we are streaming live to both. Uh, but I'll also be sure to glance over every now and then and try to answer your questions. Uh, and there will be time at the end of the, today's presentation uh, if you have questions then as well. So in Metastock, this is kind of the broad overview you'll see on the screen here uh, of what we've done. So like I mentioned, we have the brand new charting system with new charting capabilities, styles, updates, uh, drawing tools, you're really gonna love it. Uh, we've also made some updates throughout the Power Console as well as inside of Option Scope where you're gonna have new risk graphs in there and put call ratios uh, and you can do top options. The Quote Center also gained um, some new features as well that I think you're really gonna like. And as is common theme in a lot of our recent releases. You know, we've added new ease of use and just um, better usability features throughout the platform. And then we have some new systems and strategies inside of there. Uh, and we've also made some updates to our login process, just making that easier as well. Uh, so to jump into uh, the new charting features, so, and don't worry, we won't be spending most of our time in PowerPoints today, it will be mostly in Metastock. I'm actually gonna show you guys all the new features, at least all the ones um, that I can remember here and, and, and that are on the list and sh show you how they work too. So not only will you get the feature highlights, but you're gonna know how to use them after today's session. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump in and show you these features um, right here. Oh, before I get too far, yep. So we're gonna actually cover all of those. Uh, starting here with the new chart styles and customizations. So I'm going to jump over into Metastock here. Uh, and this is just a regular chart of Metastock. You might already be able to see a couple of slight differences if, if you're a current Metastock user, just from this blank chart here, you will notice, you know, we have the different scroll bar down here. And also there's just a smoother look to the charts overall. And, and you'll see that kind of throughout, there's a better aesthetic uh, for Metastock now and the charts. And, and this is just your standard uh, bar chart here and you have the different charting styles and customizations. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that uh, and open up the options for these bars. And then you'll notice, um, you know, as before, we have multiple different pricing styles that you can use, uh, bars, candlesticks, candle volume, equi volume. Also, Heikinashi charts are now a part of Metastock 18. And then we have um, the line charts in here as well. And when I select those, you'll see there's multiple options here, which this is something we had before with having um, your up and down colors. But now you can also choose whether the up and down is affected by the close to close or the open to close. And to give you kind of a better example of this, I'm going to move over into the candlesticks and apply that to my chart here. And with the candlesticks, so not only do I have the up color, and the down color, but I also have an up fill color and a down fill. And these, uh, I can go into them 
And not only can I change the color, but I can change like the um, opacity on them as well, or how well you can see through them. Just to update that, you see the filled lines on the green got lighter here. And then also you have the option with these, you can choose to either always have them filled. We had some people requesting uh, that option to be available, uh, or you can ha also have them close uh, less than open for the fill mode. And then you can also choose if that's based on close to close or open to close for the close less than the, um, that there as well. Uh, and then as usual, you can still affect the weight and other styles on these two, but some other really great enhancements that you'll see that uh, go along with, you know, what you might be used to when you're looking at different candlestick charts is you can also uh, change the colors on these. And if you have a very specific way that you like to do it, like this default screen and your upfill and downfills, et cetera, uh, once you've set all of that here, you have an, um, you can have these uh, just kind of as your defaults everywhere when you open them up. And you can also just go back to restore the defaults on those as well. Uh, if you've if you messed with them a lot and just want it to go back to kind of how we had them preset. Uh, we also have this for, you know, everything in here. So we have the candle volume too. And so, you know, with volume on a candlestick, it'll make the candlestick wider based off of how much volume there is there. So that's um, some more details and, and you get the same options here for updating these as well. So it's some really great functionality uh, that's added onto these. And then I think you guys will also really like um, some of the features that we've done to the line chart. So I'm going to go ahead and put a line chart on here and you can plot it either as a line or we'll do a, a stepped line. And now you can see each time it transitions over, it has like a flat and then it steps up to the next price and steps. So that's the step line option. We also have a filled line where you can have it filled like this and it's going to fill up to the line and you can choose the colors on those. Uh, and how all the functionality works uh, with that as well. So some really great new additions to the uh, line graphs for you here. So a step filled line, we also have a dot uh, and you can put the histogram on there too. So lots of different options here. And then, then of course, being able to change the up and down color uh, with those as well. And then another one, uh, pricing style you might've noticed, noticed in here is that we've now added the Heikinashi uh, as a default charting style inside of here. Um, so I've gone ahead and applied that here and you can see it's kind of smoothed over um, the different, uh, or the chart here with the Heikinashi because it's taking an average uh, of the closes and then combining them. Uh, we had a lot of people asking for that. There used to be an add-on you could get, but you had to work with local data when you were utilizing that. Uh, and now it's just automatically available for you and you can come in here and update all those parameters and everything. Uh, inside of the charts. So um, I think that covers most of the charting styles and customizations on those styles, uh, but there are also quite a few other features here uh, that we're going to be covering. And one of those, uh, as far as the whole visual aspect of everything, is we have added 16 different themes. Uh, and you can see I just click this color palette right down here, and then it gives me the option to pull all of these up. And right now we're just on bright white. And what I can do though, is come in and choose between all of these. So you have Chrome, um, I, I mean, quite a few. I'm actually a really big fan of like the uh, black steel look and also the, oh, let's get that applied, the black steel look here. This is very similar to our Zenith uh, charts where you have like the black background with the orange coloring. Uh, and you'll also notice um, when you have multiple colors or things going on on the chart, if a theme is going to change uh, the color so that it, it would be hard to see like your candlestick or something on there. It'll actually adjust the color of your indicators and your candlesticks, et cetera, to make sure that they're still visible um, uh, throughout your charting. So you're still able to go in and set custom colors on things and then apply a different theme and have them still work out throughout all 16 of the different uh, themes that we have in there. So plenty of them for you to go in and play with. And now you can really get Metastock um, to show your charts exactly how you want them uh, in so many different functions. So really excited that they were able to get those added in. Uh, let's see what else. Let me jump into here and keep us uh, current on our PowerPoint as well. So we have the themes, they're all listed right here. You'll see them when you're inside of 18. Uh, and then also this is actually, 
it seems like such a small thing, the scroll bar inside of Metastock, but these enhancements that we've put on it have just uh, made it so much better, so much more user-friendly uh, and, and convenient, and it just really adds to the quality of the software overall. Uh, and you've probably noticed that uh, for you diehards that have been with Metastock for a while. Let me change a theme here. Let's go with, uh, just to make it a little bit easier to see which one was I going with here. Um, Chrome, there we go. I think the white's easier to see on your guys' background, for me at least. We'll, we'll try out this Chrome one for a little bit. Just You can also see the scroll bar a little better down here. And you'll notice, uh, I'm gonna use my mouse scroll wheel and there's a window here that's highlighted and I can use that. That's telling me the data uh, field that I'm in so I can see the dates that I'm in up here and I can just scroll through my charts this way. It also allows me to uh, grab either end and maybe I know okay, I just want, you know, this section of March 2021, and I can scroll it out for that section of March 2021, and I know that's basically a month right there too, uh, and then maybe I want to see April, so if I click here, it'll center, or sorry, uh, that's not centering to the date up there, <laughs> my miscommunication there, um, but it, it does let you scroll through and see the dates, and then you can see the time history too, uh, in here, so you can see like this low right here, we can view it there and it's going upward and that's the field that I'm in. Uh, you can drag it all the way out too. You also are still able to hit control and scroll in um, to kind of zoom in and narrow the window that you're looking at there. Uh, sorry, I was lining up the bar with the dates above uh, and that works slightly differently. Uh, but you can see here like there's that strong drop off and I could click on it and that's going to uh, match it up to around this area and we can see this large drop here. So it gives you a really good preview um, of what's going on on the chart throughout the data that you have loaded. You have the highlighted section that you can view. Um, you're able to move back and forth really easily this way uh, and, and click to zoom in to the spots that you wanna see. So lots of great little just updates. And I also really like uh, the animation, how it scrolls over. It's a very smooth, uh, very aesthetic. All right, and that is going to cover the scroll bar. So let's see what else we have here. So indicators, we have some great uh, new indicator features uh, and customizations and functionality here. Metastock has always been about, you know, trying to create a platform where you can customize it to meet your needs. And we're just continuing uh, to make that uh, a lot easier for you here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this um, and show you some of these new indicators. All right, so back to Metastock here. Uh, so I did kind of show you guys a lot of the uh, options that come with the different line charts. And so we also have some plot style options um, for these different indicators. I'm just looking down at my notes here. Uh, and let me, well, actually, I think I, okay, there we go. I forgot. I did a presentation earlier today and I accidentally turned off uh, part of, my toolbar here. So I can come in uh, to the indicators here and let's just go ahead and grab one uh, and, and drop it on here. So this is a moving average. And when I go to place it, it still allows me to um, choose a lot of my parameters and things here. But now I also have uh, the color line styles and for the plot styles on these indicators, I can have it plot just as a line and let's get it on there so you guys can at least see it. Uh, but then I can also come in and choose to have these indicators have like the step lines. You'll notice a lot of these uh, from the early charting styles, the filled line style, the step filled line, dot, histogram. So you can update those here and then you're still welcome to change the colors on them. So maybe you really like the idea uh, of having, uh, you know, it filled in below, but you just want it to be a really light color, something of that nature. I can go in and bring this down lower as well. Uh, to have it be exactly how I want. Another added bonus I'll just touch on now while we're in here is you actually have the ability to um, make indicators invisible now. Maybe you want indicators, I'll give some other better examples later, where you want a part of it to not be visible or you still want to have want it to do a calculation for you on the chart, uh, but you don't want to see the line on there or something. So you do have the option of making it uh, visible or invisible uh, there and then yeah, so that covers some of the different plotting options that you have with those. We also have, let me go ahead and put on Bollinger Bands because that'll actually give some really good examples here. 
So I'm going to apply uh, the just Bollinger Band here. And you'll notice now uh, for each portion of the Bollinger Band, instead of having to go into it individually, you actually have the whole, uh, the, sorry, properties for the entire Bollinger Band under just one page here. So I'm actually going to apply that. And while I'm at it, let's get rid of that moving average that I had on there before. Uh, so let's get back into this. So now you can see I have the upper band, uh, the middle and the lower band. They're all in one location here under the properties instead of having to go into each individually if you wanted to make some changes to this. And see, this is also that really good example. Maybe you don't want uh, to have the middle bar in there. It, maybe you're using some sort of line chart or something and, and that's just hard on the eyes with that there. So you can make it invisible or visible uh, they're doing that. So that's one area where you might use that. You can also choose the different plot styles for all of the different bands here, change the different colors on them. Maybe I want to have the upper band, uh, oh, that's the upper line, sorry, uh, to be green and then fill it as well. So just some examples. This is probably one where you would want to go in and make sure that you turn that down so you can still see up here. Uh, and then once you've set all of this to exactly your style that you like to use, you're actually able to come down into here and I can save the current page that I'm on right here as default. So every time I plot the Bollinger Band in the future, it's going to remember all of these settings from all of them and put them on here. I can also do save all pages as default. So if I also changed parameters here, like the time periods uh, or, the lines, anything of that nature, I can save all of those settings in the one area. And then uh, moving forward, that's how it'll always work. There's also an option to restore to the factory defaults for all, if that's something that you wanted to do. I'm not going to save um, any of those into the new wave. Maybe I'll even go back to the factory defaults here just because this is our uh, demonstration computer. So, uh, those are some great new functions here that you have on those indicators, just being able to edit them. And, and they look so much better on the chart here too. Uh, another thing, when I have something plotted like the bands here inside of the title menu here, it's going to put all those, um, the prices and values, sorry, right here in the title bar. So I have the Bollinger bands and then the values for all of those uh, are listed there. And you can you know change with the colors and things on those as well. Uh, I showed you guys how you can plot the different styles per line, invisible. Uh, so smart plotting indicators. Another thing that you'll notice here uh, is in the past, it would always ask you if you wanted to merge your indicator with the existing scale, or maybe you wanted to go and drop it down into its own window and create a new scale for it, et cetera. Now it, it's smart in the sense that it knows how these are most commonly used. Uh, you'll also see this new MACD, the MACD histogram, uh, has been added as well. It's really been popularized to see it as a histogram where you have the MACD uh, and then um, the histogram level on it as well. And so it just knew automatically that this would be plotted into its own bar down here instead of asking me if I wanted to merge it in. Uh, so you can see that down here now. And then this is the histogram here portion of it that measures the difference between the signal line uh, and the MACD there. So looks really good. And then uh, of course, as always, we can go inside of it. Let me just double click. It's as easy as that. And I can change you know, some of the settings or looks on it here and um, to update my chart that way. So really, really cool features there. Let's see what else I have on my notes here. There's so many new things. I don't wanna skip over them. So I'm gonna uh, check on them every now and then. Ah, another one here, we have uh, the volume up down indicator. So we've always had volume, but now let's plot this volume up down and I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on here while I talk about it. Uh, maybe I'll even get rid of the MACD just to make this a little easier to follow. And you know what? This thing maybe is getting a little wild here. Let's go with um, contrast. So you can see that how it changes the colors throughout the themes for my different indicators too. That's something I mentioned earlier and wanted to show you guys. Um, let's just go ahead and go with this standard print one here. So on this volume up down indicator, which is slightly different from the normal uh, indicator that we had, and I'm gonna go ahead and just come up to the current time zone here. Uh, I have some options with it. So if I click into it, it's plotting uh, as, a, as a histogram here. 
and it has the default up color is green and the default down color is red. And then I can choose if that up down field is based off of the close, which is referencing price. Uh, so if I look up on the chart for the prices up here, you'll see on this day, um, yesterday it was higher and today it's lower. So it's telling me down here with uh, volume is telling me, hey, the price is lower today. Even if there's a day that has you know a lot more volume, like this one right here has uh, more volume than the previous day, but because it's down in price at the close, uh, it's showing up as red here. The other option that you have is maybe you want to just have it uh, be pertaining to the volume and not to the price or the close. So I can change that to volume, and now it's telling me if the volume was higher or lower, uh, it's giving a color or style for that. So I can see here that on this big day of volume, uh, there was more volume than this day, so that's why the color is green here, and on this day it was less, so that's why it's red. So you have the option of choosing um, the different factors here for that, uh, and then of course choosing your colors and everything and saving those as a default, as you'll find uh, is a theme throughout everything now. Uh, so that is the up-down volume. Uh, we have the built-in MACD histogram, which I showed you guys, and now uh, I'm going to show you another really nice feature um, that we have had a lot of people asking us for. I'm going to delete the Bollinger Band off of there uh, and check it out, guys. So the Ichimoku uh, cloud, now when I plot this on, and I can, of course, choose all my periods and the colors here, et cetera, but I'm just going to plot it. And you will now see the Ichimoku cloud has the ability to plot into the future. So the new charting engine lets you see you know, into the future now, uh, when previously we had to just add like commentary and notes to tell you guys what was what it was doing. Now you can have that visual appeal here um, where it shows you out into the future. Um, so uh, that we've been asked for that for quite a while now. And now that we've kind of redone all the coding and updated things, uh, we've been able to implement that. So really exciting there. Uh, glad they were able to get that active, uh, added as well. And then um, another thing, I'll just say it now because it's there. You can also see over here, we're going to talk about the X and Y axis a bit more later, but it also, you can turn on to plot uh, values over here. And, and as well as they're up in the title bar, like I mentioned before, and you can see the color matching here of what they are, as well as on the chart, you see the purple or pink there, uh, the maroon, the blue. So really great way of being able to see the values of things, seeing the different comparison levels on them. Uh, and yeah, I'll be covering some more about uh, those features a little later on, but I'm gonna stick to the formatting here for now. Uh, also, of course, like I mentioned before, if you guys do have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm remembering to look right now. Doesn't look like we have any questions yet, so I'll just keep at it. Uh, and let's, Let's do just a quick review here. So we've gone over the different plotting styles. Uh, you can fill between envelopes. So like Bollinger Band, you saw how we were able to fill between there and choose the different colors. Um, we made lines invisible. Smart plotting, we showed you. The MACD, up, down, Ichimoku. Also, with those of you that work with the P variable, uh, it'll display the indicator values automatically now for that. Um, so it just helps do those calculations for you. It's another uh, just user-friendly feature that we've added in. Uh, and not only have we updated the indicators and the charts and the styles of all of that, we have also done some really great enhancements to our drawing tools. Uh, these have some of the coolest updates, I think. I, I feel like maybe I always say, oh, this is one of my favorite things. There's just so many things that I like about this upgrade. Um, so forgive me if, if I keep, if I say more than one thing is, is so great or my favorite, I just like it all. Uh, in different ways. So here we go. Let's jump in and show you some of these drawing tools. All right, so just to clean up my chart a little bit, let's go ahead and get rid of the Ichimoku on there. Let's maybe zoom out a little bit and get on to a more current state here on the chart. All right, so uh, with trend lines, we can do some really neat new things here. I'm going to come over here and select uh, my trend line. And what I'm gonna do is draw from this high right here down to this low right here. And right away, you're gonna notice some really cool new features that come on this trend line that I just drew. Instead of just having the line here, 
this is actually turned on to have uh, a few things. We've turned on the right arrow, which adds this arrow here that we didn't have before. And then also the most exciting portion here is you can see you're able to add a label onto these trend lines. And you can have that label tell you the performance information of that line that you've drawn. Uh, so this is saying from this point here to that point there, there was a negative 42.27% uh, drop. That is huge. This is Facebook uh, or Meta now, not associated with Meta stock, but um, yeah, <laughs> the Meta platform. So they had a huge drop here uh, due to some changes they made, but this lets me see and calculate how big that drop was. And it tells me how many periods that was over as well. You can also have it show uh, performance information. So if you wanna see the exact number of points that it dropped instead of the percentage, uh, you can do that. You can also, um, let's see what else, you can change the font on it here. You can add uh, whether you want it bold or not. You can even put like extensions. So you wanna have that drawn, um, but you still want to visually be able to see it passed. So I can add like a right extension too, uh, if I'm trying to like draw support levels or something, but I wanna know this information here. Uh, lots of different things there. Also a really big uh, update on this as well is the snap points, you can choose whether this snaps directly to a period, so it's connecting to the days, or you can choose whether it's connecting, snapping exactly onto a price for one of those days, uh, or you can have it not snap to anything at all. If you wanna draw your trend line in the middle of a bar or in between two bars or something of that nature, you don't want it to snap to that, it gives you that option now. So you can choose the different snaps and then, um, also just to show like I could snap it to the top price here or the uh, bottom, et cetera. Let me open it back up. Oh, sorry, I had it on period. So to sh better show that apply. So onto the bottom price here, or I could snap it up to the, the top price or on the period, it doesn't matter really where it is on there if you're doing it that way. So that's really neat. Also, you can do custom labels on here. So maybe I wanna change it to, uh, Bob's trend line. All right, let's apply that. Now uh, it, it states Bob's trend line. Maybe you're trying to showcase something for some charts that you're sharing somewhere, or you wanna write yourself some notes and some functionality uh, on there. Yeah, custom labels and then custom arrows, everything on there. And then once you've set everything to exactly how you want it, come into here and save that current page as your default or all the pages if you also went in and changed like the color and the style and the weight, et cetera. I'll go ahead and restore these to the factory defaults. So just the old trend line, uh, like you guys are used to it. Now, tons of new functionality on there. It's going to do a lot more calculations for you uh, and, and just make it, um, you know, give you these better tools in Metasoft. That's what it's all about, right? Uh, all right, let's see what else we have here. So. I also have uh, some other new drawing tools that we've put into here. I have, let's get one pulled up here. Hopefully I don't pass them all. Here we go. Okay, so we've added in the odds probability cone. Uh, and with this odds probability cone, uh, we've made some great changes to this uh, where you can get it applied to your chart here and you're able to go inside of this uh, odds probability cone and it has like the standard um, probability functions that you can look at here, but you can now add uh, additional zones to your, your own custom zones. So maybe I wanted to see the 50% uh, area, I can add that to it and apply and now you see if it's added the 50% uh, probability area into that cone. You can also add drift periods onto this. So maybe I want to drift this um, by a function of two. And so I hit apply and you can see, excuse me, it uh, shifted everything upwards. It drifted the image upwards. So it's saying uh, with the drift applied, these are your probability windows or cones here uh, based off the functions. I can of course go in and change the color and style on that. I can also, uh, add like a negative drift as well. And that's gonna drift it downwards. Uh, and, and this is a really cool feature um, that we were able to get implemented and we were working with Daryl for quite a while 
uh, on having these enhancements and making it so we can get these put in. And so uh, it's really exciting that we were able to have those added. Uh, let's go ahead and just restore these to the factory there, um, default settings. And uh, yeah, so you'll now have that new drawing tool at your disposal. You'll also get uh, Andrew's pitchfork. So this is another one um, that you can apply to your charts and then uh, I have a lot going on here on my chart now. So just to kind of put the pitchfork on here and I'm not uh, really placing these to demonstrate the tools in the most perfect manner, just to show you that they're here and some of the changes that are on them. So when you have the pitchfork applied, which a lot of people like to use this for their like support and resistance levels or throughout their window and you might have, um, but yeah, you would wanna plot this a little bit differently, but let's go ahead and jump into it uh, and show you guys some of the changes in here too. So you can also add um, additional like warning lines. So instead of just these defaults here, let me add, oh, add a custom line at 1%. And then let me get rid of those warning lines actually. So you can add additional custom lines that just did a very small amount, so that's hard to see. Let's put in a 25% and apply that. You can see that's here. You can also choose whether you have the warning lines applied to that or not, or not as well. And it changes up the, the pitchfork value and lets you see a much clearer window on these now. Uh, so another great tool or function added into the drawing tools that we have available for you. Um, and yeah, the Andrews pitchfork, it can provide you with like momentum traders with signals in the long or intermediate term, it's most useful in predicting more protracted market swings uh, to give a little uh, bit of more information on that there. Uh, let's see what other tools that we have available uh, to show you guys here too. Let me jump in to my PowerPoint and, and do a quick review here. Uh, so yeah, I showed you, you can draw or use most tools and connect to the price or the period, uh, the saving of your defaults, we've reviewed that and changing different colors. You can do that, even go into those and change per line. So the different percentage point lines that you have in there, you can choose the different colors for them just to make it so you can get the data that you're looking for uh, fast and efficiently. Um, it's often you know, easier to remember them when you have them color coded and things of that nature. We've added the second probability level and the drift options on the odds probability cone. Uh, the crosshair now highlights the date and price. Let's go ahead and go check that out. Um, so if I uh, get my crosshair option here and put it on, not only is it telling me the price level over here on the right, it's also giving me the date at the bottom. So it's showing both of those at the same time, which can be really useful uh, when you're trying to identify a certain day or price level or something of that nature. Um, so just a nice little feature that uh, you know, we wanted to make sure it was added in there as well that we've had uh, requested. And that's how all these features come about, you know, is that our users, you guys, you request them and we get them in here, you know, as soon as we can. Uh, so definitely, I know there's people out there that can benefit from all of this because we've had multiple people asking for it. Uh, let's see, another thing I saw when we we're peeking at the slide, uh, was some changes to text. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab text uh, and put this on here, text. So, and we will save that. And now when you're wanting to edit the text, you used to have to go through some additional uh, features in here. Sorry, I was reading some of the questions over there. Uh, but now you can simply double click on the text that you have on your chart to go in and change all of the parameters on that too. So uh, again, just ease of use, better functionality throughout. That's that's a common theme here that you guys are gonna see. So now you can more easily go in here uh, and change these, the, the text values and things of that nature. Um, all right, let's see what else we have. So the X and Y axis, uh, I already showed you guys some like the ability to see all the different prices and labels on there. Um, when we were looking at our chart earlier, but also show you some of the other new features that we've added as well. So let's go ahead, jump back in here. Um, yeah, do you know, I, well, let's clean this up a little bit. And maybe just as a demo too, um, I don't think this is actually even noticed or mentioned in our slides, but we've also just made some slight updates to like some of the templates that you'll find uh, as the defaults listed down here. So just to jump into one and, and also let you guys just see, you know, how good these charts look now. Uh, this is a popular template and you can see 
uh, this is actually utilizing some of the features I'm gonna get into. Uh, so if we're over on my uh, Y axis here, you have the automatic scale and then you now have the option of truncating the price labels. Uh, you can also choose um, whether you show the base security label prices or show the indicator last value labels. So I'll turn that off. You can see um, that turned off the last value there. Uh, another really cool feature, this is actually taking advantage of it right now, is it's showing grid bands on the Y axis, but you can show just like major grid lines. So I'll go ahead and do that. And this is what it looks like here. You can also add in minor lines. So you can see these smaller ones have been added. It's, um, or it's, you can also add the grid bands, which show the band side to side. Uh, or turn these off and have just the band. So that's an option there. New ways to just kind of help you see where price levels are at uh, while looking at that um, Y axis. Let me grab my paper here. Um, you can see the values. Oh, this is another really big one. Uh, let's jump on over into here. Maybe actually for demonstrating these, we should have a little bit cleaner of a template. So not only do you have uh, the values over here, for those, you can also come in and change the units here. Sorry guys, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, to use this, so this is currently set to use the symbol definition, but some of you like future traders, <laughs> when you're trading, instead of having like a decimal like 207.6, uh, you might be looking at fractions like um, a 16th or something of that nature. So now instead of using the decimals, you can also have it uh, switch over to fractions and it has all the different fraction options here for you. So you can look at it to easier match it and just to make it, um, you know, match along with what you're trading better. You can, uh, most people probably just use the symbol definition, so we'll do it for you here. Uh, so that was a much needed update there that we've got added in too for you guys. And then jumping on from uh, the Y axis, we have the X axis down, axis down here. And I'm actually really happy with some of the changes in here, <coughs> especially because of the demonstrations we do because it makes it a lot easier to kind of change the data that's loaded inside of your chart or field. Uh, so before you used to always come just to show you guys uh, into the chart tab here and you would choose the display range of the amount of data that you're loading in here and then the date uh, or date range etc and you can see these new options to open and close these here too. Um, but now I can also go down into the x-axis here and then I can select from here okay, I want uh, the display range to be 100 records, or you know, maybe I wanna change this to, oops, 200 records. So apply, and now it's loading 200 records here in the display window. Uh, also the data request range, so how much data it's actually loading overall. Currently it's set at 500, but maybe I want to load maximum. And so I apply that here, and so it's still showing me the 200 right now, right here, uh, but it's actually loaded in the full maximum amount of data. So I can now scroll back all the way to the inception or history way back here. So really great way to be able to make sure you're looking at uh, specific date ranges that you want, which you can do that. Uh, choose the exact dates that you're looking at or the number of records. Uh, really glad that they added that in. Uh, I hadn't even thought of that option uh, and it just makes things so much nicer and, and easier to jump around in there. Uh, also with all that said, you, we've also um, added the grid lined options here too. So you can turn on the x-axis grid lines uh, or grid bands. Uh, one that seems to be really popular is having the x bands and then uh, the y bands as well to give you um, this clean look here that makes it just easier to identify, you know, major points on your chart. Uh, let's see what else here. Ah, so I did kind of touch on this, um, but you do get the option of uh, opening and closing the different things. And in lots of areas, you'll find this now, where if you don't want to be looking at all this data, you know, have that option available uh, to you. So let's come back into our charts here. Not quite sure how I'm doing on time. Okay, we've got plenty of time still. Uh, so some other updates. Yeah, so the most recently used for selected time periods, I'm going to show you guys that in just a second. Really cool and it 
We also added easier identification for the timeframes that you're looking at. Um, the tile settings, when your charts load, we'll cover that too. We can show in activity gaps and time zone options. Perfect. So let's check those features out here. Uh, so first off, when we're looking at um, certain time intervals, and let's kind of jump up here again. So this is normal. You would see a D down here before if you were on a daily chart, um, or you would have an I if you were on an intraday chart or a W for weekly, et cetera. Well, now if I want to say, look at a five minute chart or I have a five minute chart saved or something, I come back to Metastock. I wasn't sure what I was looking at. Uh, instead of having to, you know, hover over it and look at it or uh, click into it down here to tell you, it now says I for intraday and then M for minute and five for a five minute chart. So I'm looking at an intraday minute five chart. I can also choose, you know, if I did the 30 minute, it turns to IM30. Also, of course, you have custom options where you could come in here and choose, you know, 22 minutes for whatever reason. Um, maybe that's what you want to be looking at. So I, I, now it says IM22 uh, instead of just like a C for custom. And you'll also see we added a most recently used uh, list for this as well, similar to how in the last upgrade we added the most recently used uh, indicator list. You also have that available for your time intervals uh, so that if you're often looking at certain time intervals, they're just going to be saved right here. You don't have to type in the custom one each time. And as an added bonus, if you jump from there uh, over into your charts in here in the Power Console, under the intervals, you're also going to have those intervals saved here, as well as um, in the explorations and system tests as well. The only difference is if you're looking at like ticks, you can't run an exploration on ticks. Uh, or, so that doesn't show up here versus the other location. But everything else does. You have the most recently used list, and that's going to show up in all the different um, Power Console uh, sections there. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, okay, so there's some more info on our charts itself. Let's go ahead and open up um, properties here. So if I go into the chart window properties and I go into the trading session, so a lot of you remember that we put in the uh, pre and post market trades available for Metastock real time charts uh, and one of the more recent updates. But now in version 18, you also have the option of putting in inactivity gaps. Uh, so maybe there was just no activity for a certain day or, or reason, et cetera, uh, and it would just kind of skip over that or it just that wouldn't show up on a chart. But now you can apply that and see the difference uh, on your chart, see when there was inactivity for whatever reason. Uh, so that option is now available. You can also go in and choose um, your different time zone. And if you prefer to have all the time be in your existing time zone instead of like the default like Eastern time zone that um, a lot of people uh, in the US will utilize, uh, you can choose your own time zone and, and have it applied right in here. Uh, also, when you're loading charts, if, if you're loading like a, a, a decent amount of list of charts and you have uh, the tile option on, it'll start um, automatically applying that for you when you're opening the additional charts. So there's new improvements uh, to how they open and everything as well. Let's see what else we have. Okay, let's check out uh, some of our other Power Console updates. Uh, we, once again, we've improved the searching functionalities and features, and these are just really big quality of life and ease of use enhancements that we've added in, where you can now search by name or symbol in the chart tabs themselves. You can also utilize this uh, to see what symbols are traded in specific folders. Um, we've added new favorite tabs in our explorations and system tests uh, and searches in there, and then also some other chart tab options. So let's check those out. All right. So if I go into my chart here, so we've added this additional search box here. You can still sort by name or symbol. It doesn't matter if you have name or symbol selected for your sort option. The search box uh, utilizes both name and symbol either way. So maybe I'm curious as to where I can find like oil. So if I type in oil here, it removes the things out of the list that don't include oil in them. And you know, oil is a global type co commodity, so it's going to be traded 
on in Asia and Europe and North America, et cetera. It's under a bunch of different index constituents here. Uh, so that's one great way to look it up. You can also type in like Apple and see where Apple is traded. So it's in the S&P 500, the 100, it's in the NASDAQs. Um, there's different variations of it uh, in the different Asia exchanges. So we have Apple credit, but there's also probably, you know, AAPL traded on multiple different exchanges as well. So it's just a really nice way uh, of giving some new functionality there and helping you to identify, hey, I want to know, is this traded on the NASDAQ or the NYSE or something of that nature? Uh, you can search in here or just to help you find um, the securities that you're looking for as well. Of course, we still have the normal instrument search option here. If you want to search by name or symbol, starts with, contains, et cetera, that option's still available to you. We haven't taken anything out uh, per se. We've really just tried to add functionality into here for you guys. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so if we go into um, an exploration or a system test, we did add in the favorite section before where it would be up here uh, and you had the like open and, and close options. But now uh, when you select different things that are your most commonly used or you're searching for it, uh, maybe you wanna look for one of the performance systems, which you'll come to find out we've added in more performance systems into Metastock 18 for free. You don't have to pay $300 for the full performance systems package anymore that used to be our number one selling add-on. It's now included in Metastock, but I know they all start with PS for performance system. So I can type that in up here and it filters down to these. So it makes it just much easier to find things, especially when you have, uh, you know, you've created a lot of your own explorations or you have a lot of our great different add-ons uh, as well. This is gonna make it just so much easier to navigate through here. You can uh, grab the favorites that you want and then um, you can add those into your favorite tab. And now we have the favorite tab over here for running those scans. So let me actually grab this too and just add this one as well. Um, so you can see you have a tab here instead of having to click in and open them up, et cetera, over there. You also have the search option here as well, like you saw in the charts when you're searching um, for the different public online lists too. So that's gonna be added there as well. And then this also applies to our system test. Uh, so you have the new favorites tab here um, as well. So you can choose you know, the favorites that you have and just add them in there. And then you'll have just your list right here, making it easier to jump in and select the favorites. Perhaps you only will use certain ones and you don't wanna have all of these listed here. It's a really great way to help you go through that or use the search functionality. Maybe you wanna test out all the new performance systems that have been added to Metastock. Uh, so you can type in PS up here and then select everything. I actually have some selected that aren't performance systems, uh, but if I go that and then just to do a PS, I can select them all in here this way. So it makes it much easier to really select the different things that you're wanting to select to filter out things that you're no longer wanting to use. Uh, really great additions to the Power Console for the uh, system tester and exploration. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in to some of the other updates that we've added as well. So with our quote center, uh, we've now added the gainers and losers bar. It also shares themes with option scope. Uh, and you can use template settings um, from in there as well. So let's check check out those new features. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the quote center up here. Looks like somebody had a demo list before. Let's go ahead and use that same one uh, and open it up. So this is loading 98 different securities here. So I open this, one of the first things you'll notice here is the gainers and loser bar. So of the list, keep in mind, this only takes into consideration what you have open in your list. It looks like today we have 48 um, gainers and 50 losers. This is just about 100 securities. So that comes out to you know 49% and 51% uh, here uh, for the percentage. So maybe you have your portfolio in here. You can know just at a quick glance how many uh, securities in your portfolio are up, how many are down, uh, what percentage that is, et cetera. So really nice um, feature to have added into here. Uh, also, uh, you'll notice once again, <coughs> the little drop down menu. So you can kind of organize things a little bit uh, easier now for the different displays that you might have in here. If 
if you know that that's set exactly how you want it, you don't have to have it taking up any of your screen or your settings, etc. And then when you put in a uh, one of the themes that we have in here for Quote Center, like we have dark, dark orange, and light, uh, this transfers over into option scope too, because we figure, hey, if you like to have the white background with um, you know these different styles on this screen, you're probably going to want it when you're looking other places in Metastock that are similar with different uh, data type displays. Uh, so that will function. Uh, yes, let's close that in the option scope, which I'll go ahead and jump over to now. And let's go ahead and just open this up with um, whatever we have here. Uh, let's go ahead and do, we were looking at this chart earlier. Let's open up Facebook in the option scope. And now it has that same white theme that you saw previously uh, that we had inside of Quote Center. <clears throat> and you'll notice quite a few other changes here as well. Uh, we have, let's see, the uh, put and calls up here. So you can see the amount of volume that we've had for the calls, 46,981, and the puts here. So that'll let you know, you know, um, uh, how many of those are available for each. And then it also lists the open interest for both of them as well. Uh, so you have that on the puts and calls. And then you can also see the top. Uh, if I click on this, it's going to tell me, okay, the top call here is located right here. If I wanted to go find that in a really large list um, and, and the same. So it's, it's loading that uh, the amount with the largest open interest right here uh, and, and it'll just navigate right to it. You've also seen now that I've clicked on a couple of these, it's actually loaded uh, those options that I selected down into um, the strategies list. So with option scope, this is another really big thing. Like this is absolutely huge for our option traders. We have uh, eight different, I believe it's eight actually. Maybe I'm uh, saying that wrong, but we'll see soon when we get back to the PowerPoint. But there's a bunch of option strategies in here that you can select. And if you hover over it, it's gonna tell you the information about this too. So the bear put spread, um, like sell one put and buy another put at a higher strike price. This is if you're in a bearish market, it has limited risk, limited reward, et cetera. You can get other details on it uh, by just hovering over it. But let's go for a different example here. Let me actually choose the size on this. Let's just put it up on part of the screen here. <clears throat> and let's go to a more common, just like your standard long call here. So this is to buy a call. Um, bullish market outlook is when you would generally utilize this. And then it lets me come in and it lets me select the instrument here. I can say, you know, the call, the buy, et cetera, the strike price, my buy price, the number of contracts that I want to purchase, et cetera. Uh, or instead of doing that, I can just identify it up here and click on the one that I want. And it's going to automatically input that information based on the one that I clicked on. And now you'll see uh, some really cool things down here on this. And I'm going to pop open my legend here. Uh, and let's just restore this to the default colors. Uh, and you'll see, so this is uh, the long call here that I'm doing. The underlying price is currently right here. And the break even point that I would need is right here. Uh, and then I can change the colors on each of those, as you can see over here and the different uh, opacity as well. So maybe I want this to be displayed as uh, the screen color here, just as an option that's actually kind of hard to see against this theme. Let's make it black. Uh, so it adds those bars. And then if I hover over the price graph here, so this will tell me based on the factors that we put in, if the price, I'm uh, pointing at the screen here, if the price uh, is at $167.53, then the loss that I would take on this is $3,215 uh, with that. And that's probably because this is a more expensive one, but you can see what happens, the cost of it, and how much I would lose if it's there. But if the underlying price stays uh, so this is where it's at right now. So if it goes to these areas and it's going to max out at a loss of 3,215 with what I have selected. But uh, if I get up to here, $212, as we can see, um, then that's my break even point. And then I'm profitable up here. And it tells me 
okay, if the price reaches $234 with this option, I'm going to profit $2,275. So that's a way of uh, looking at it uh, with this method utilizing a long call. I could also do like a long straddle and then it, I'm just going to select, you know, two random ones here to apply that. Okay, so now if I do <coughs> the long call portion, the long put lay, uh, leg, here's my underlying price. This is my break even point uh, if it's straddled to go down and the break even price uh, if it's going to go up. And this is where I would lose if the price stays in this value and it tells me how much I would lose and the price, et cetera. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how that works here and you have it. We're not going to go over all the different strategies, um, but I do have a slide that shows them that you guys can look at just real quick. Um, so but yeah, again, you can see the open interest and volume. These are the different option strategies that are now included. Uh, and that's a little, uh, a way of showing how they work. Um, I'm just reading some of the comments here on YouTube. Um, great. Okay. And it doesn't look like questions, just some nice comments, uh, about the service. So let's see here. So we have the top book call search. We showed you that. Uh, you can customize the colors on that risk graph. I opened up the legend and showed you that, and it shares the uh, theme settings with <coughs> Quote Center. Sorry, I'm getting a bit of a tickle in my throat, so I'm going to take a quick drink of water here so I don't get too raspy on you. All right, so we touched on this a little bit earlier, but now I'd love to tell you guys a bit more about it. Uh, with your purchase of Metastock 18, we are now including our Performance Systems Plus add-on for free. Uh, you guys might have noticed you had some Performance Systems previously, around 30 or so in there, uh, but now, and then there was an add-on that was available uh, to get an additional 54 uh, systems, and those are now just included in your upgrade. For a lot of you, um, you know, it's going to be significantly cheaper to just upgrade than and to get that than what you would have uh, paid previously for just the add-on, but you also get all the new added features uh, of Metastock 18.2. We've also made some updates to the Haguro system, uh, and we've uh, added Daryl Guppy Traders ATR indicators as well. So uh, I think this, yeah, perfect. This is what I was wanting. So the performance systems plus, this was the best selling add-on of all time. Granted, it's been out for quite a while, uh, but when it first released, I mean, we've sold hundreds of these things and still to this day, we have been selling it every single year. It gets great results. Uh, we've had great feedback on it. Uh, and now we're just including all of these additional 54 systems uh, in Metastock 18. That alone is a great reason to upgrade. But of course, if you're still sitting with me here, you'll know that everything else that's been released in here too, all of that is reason alone to upgrade as well. Um, for the Performance Systems Plus, so these are the new systems that are added into Metastock that you'll just have uh, in your indicator list and et cetera. There's also 70 explorations with this thing too. Uh, and just so that you know where all of this information came from, so these aren't just a bunch of random systems just to give you a large number. Uh, what they did is some serious testing uh, of over 10,000 different combinations of systems on stocks and they use daily data for this, no trade delay, and no stops were included. So these can even be further optimized as well, depending on your trading styles. But just so you know, this is how the list was first created. Uh, these are low price, low volume stocks. Uh, sorry, low price, low volume stocks are not included. So they didn't use penny stocks uh, or you know pink sheets for this. They wanted, because those can just be so volatile that, that they utilized um, you know, just your standard stocks. And then these systems were only deemed desirable and added in if their trade efficiency was positive for more than 50% of all stocks analyzed. So these went through some rigorous testing uh, in tons of different combination to give you these results. And to this day, uh, some of these systems are our best performing systems inside of Metastock uh, when you run like your system tests on them uh, and et cetera. And you kind of saw earlier too, with the new filtering option, it's really easy to select just all of them. Uh, and, and test them inside of Metastock. Uh, so you can see for yourself just how well they've performed. Uh, let me 
I want to even just show you guys that on the chart because I get so excited uh, talking about this. So let's go ahead and close the option scope here. Uh, so if I went into a system test, it looks like I think I actually ran a system test earlier today, uh, but only on a few securities just to show you guys like a report um, from this. So first, type in PS here. That's going to give me a list of all the different performance systems. And then we could run a test. Maybe you want to see which one of these that's the best on Tesla because that's just such a wild um, security to trade. I can do my start system test here uh, and this is running. It uh, looks like there's a few that just weren't clicked, but it just ran 79 different tests on Tesla for the last five years. And you can see uh, the results for these. You'll see even though Tesla has traded so wildly, anyone that follows Tesla, you'll know this is not a standard stock and so many systems will lose money trading this. Um, but the performance systems performed well here. And now I'm kind of realizing too, maybe that is just uh, not the best in the world example too. So just run it on the spy here real quick too, over 500 records, last about two years of data. Just to give you a quick example of how well uh, some of these can perform. And here's the results here uh, and I can sort and there's just a ton of professional systems here. And, and I'm not going in and trading my doing my trade options or selecting the best systems uh, for all these different markets. I just wanted you guys to see the performance of some of those in there for yourself and see how easy it is to select that whole list and scan it across the market. So you can go in, play with these, see the ones that perform the best on the securities that you guys like to trade uh, and, and start using them yourself. So really exciting. They were able to get this whole add-on included with your upgrade. Uh, so, wow, so much value. Uh, has been added to the upgrade with that alone on top of all the other new features that we've added in. So back into here, we have Daryl Guppy's ATR. This is an, another new indicator that's uh, just included automatically. We've been wanting to get this in Metastock for quite a while, but we had to make some updates to our charting uh, formulas to get these in here. Uh, the ATR is based on the book on the uh, from Daryl Guppy Stocks and Forex Trading. It provides you with a trailing stop uh, using ATR. Um, long only moves sideways or up and short. This will give you confirmation of trend breaks and it'll also help provide you with stop loss points. Uh, and it makes it really easy to see easy stop identification if ATR stop is penetrated, the trade ends, that's what it means. I can show you a quick example of that. Uh, let's go ahead and just pull up a chart here and uh, GT. That's uh, Guppy Traders. So it has the ATR short and the uh, ATR long. So you're able to go in. Oh, I have to look at a date here. So actually, I, I didn't select a date. But when you're putting it in, you tell it the month that you're looking at. So we'll say this is, uh, this is going to actually turn off right away if I put it right there. But let's go for it anyway. So start day of the month. So let's say from the 1st of February in 2022 okay and if i apply that oh well i i should have chose a different date but that's how you can apply the settings on it and it'll give you a trailing stop that bounces but just a couple days after it was added uh you know you have this huge drop so that hit the stop level uh turning it off but if i let's actually go in and let's choose the first and see how different. Okay, I, I probably should have given a much better example here instead of on a flat chart where it uh, stops out the day after. Um, let's go ahead and move to right here, 12, 22, 21. Sorry guys, I should have chose a better one from the start. So 12, start month 12, start of the day of month 22, and this is year 21. Let's apply that. And now this is gonna give a slightly better uh, trailing stop that's applied up here. And you see once the price has gone down, then it turns off and it just goes sideways and you know to get out when it's hit that point. Um, so that is how that works. Another really cool new indicator that really can help you with your stops and longs. Um, and with all of that said, I wanna actually get uh, I'd love for you guys to be able to see even more of these details. You can go to our website, metastock.com forward slash MM222, and that is going to um, show you 
uh, a lot of these new features again, also give you some of the different upgrade options that are available to you. Uh, and so, you know, we have some great deals going right now too on uh, these upgrades. We're discounting all of them as our release. So they're not at retail rate. We have uh, discounts depending on the version that you have currently. I know a lot of you guys here today, you've been current with like Metastock 17. And so we give you an extra hundred dollars off the regular upgrade price if you have version 17 plus the release discount. You can jump into our sales chat room, metastock.com forward slash sales chat, uh, and they can go over the different pricing options that are available to you if you have one of these older versions. Uh, but you know, as you've seen throughout this demo, we have some huge highlights in here. You have those trend lines that can, you know, do extra calculations for you. You have the new visual the appealing look. It's a lot easier to navigate uh, inside of your charts. We've added tons of new drawing tools. You get all the performance systems indicators in there. So, so many new features for you guys to start taking advantage of. And you've seen everything is now just easier to use too. So you don't have to worry about learning uh, all these new systems or an entirely new software. Uh, for those of you that um, are watching today that maybe you don't even have Metastock, I only touched on what's in there because these are just the enhancements from our last upgrade, but there's so many other great features and now it's easier to use than ever before. So there's never been a better time, you know, to pick up a copy of Metastock 18, whether you're a brand new user uh, or existing and, and looking to get the most out of our software. Uh, and again, for you new users, metastock.com forward slash P222. If you're looking to upgrade MM222, uh, or simply just chat in. Maybe you have some other questions. Our sales guys, you know, they're experts. They've gone through all these features themselves. They can help um, answer any of your questions and help you with any discounts that you might qualify for. Uh, my, the purpose of my demo today was mostly just to show you guys how to utilize all of these. Uh, if you're on a subscription model of Metastock, then you just get 18 included automatically. Just go to your downloads page and you can download it. Uh, but I know a lot of you, uh, bought our software to save money in the long run. Uh, and so you have these inexpensive upgrade options. Are there any questions uh, that I can maybe answer for you guys today before uh, I let you take off? Let's see how, how I'm doing on time. Oh, I only went a, a few minutes over, so many features uh, that that's kind of to be expected with this. Um, but it, it doesn't look like I have a ton of questions coming in. Yeah. Uh, so I do see, yes, Facebook does look like it's having a tough time on those charts. Um, well, I think that's going to cover it then, guys. Yeah, if you do have other questions, come into our chat room, talk with us. We can send you more information. Uh, also, with your upgrade, we are including a free copy of our Unleash the Power of Metastock 18, and that's going to give you an extended like ebook that covers all of our different power tools and features uh, and there's video tutorials that go along with those as well. Plus we've released like 19 new uh, training videos to kind of utilizing the newer charts and showing you how everything works. So you'll definitely have the assistance you need to take advantage of all these features. Uh, we can help you with your upgrade on a support level if you need that as well uh, with the installation, but it should be a very easy transition and you can migrate in all of your old formulas uh, or or custom indicators and things of that nature. Don't worry, you're not gonna lose those if you guys upgrade. Uh, yeah, I think that it's gonna go ahead and cover it for today. Thank you guys so much for sitting with me and um, you know, looking forward to future presentations with you. But for now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and sign off.